friends, this is Andrew Phipps. I'm glad to be with you today. I hope that you uh, can uh, be with us for the entire program. I think we have some exciting materials that hopefully will be informative. Uh, maybe they'll be inspirational, at least I hope so. Uh, regardless, if you'd like to remind a neighbor or friend, perhaps this might be a good time to do that as we get into our Faith, Family, and Freedom broadcast. Today we're going to be analyzing and taking a look at civilizations. I'll be sharing with you also from some material that I recorded a few years back on a Return to Greatness DVD. And, uh, you know, when you think about civilizations, from what I can gather, it seems like civilizations just go in cycles. You start from bondage or human bondage, and you go around in that cycle and eventually get to freedom, but seemingly it's not long until you are headed back the other direction. You know, even when you study uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, Sodom had no, uh, they, they had no Bible. And uh, when you study how that they seem to have plenty, they got to be very pompous in the, the people. And then perversion took over. And it wasn't long until, of course, they faced the judgment of God. I think in civilizations as we see it today, you know, the heart of the king is in the Lord's hand. God controls everything. He does not require one contemporary thought. There is no plan B. God sees it all. He allows it according to his divine plan. Having said that, we're just human beings. We're finite. God is infinite. And so truly his work here on earth must be our own. I think at least we can help one another in these days of discouragement, these days of depravity, these days of depression. Perhaps we can see that the decadence all around us. But I hope the day that the material will alert us to the fact that in our own way of thinking, you know, the culture reflects the arts, the literature, the music of a people. And seems like that we have gone to the gutter today in what we tempt, attempt to glorify or push. We exalt those that have uh, records of criminality. We try to make heroes out of them. We try to put those people on a pedestal, maybe with people who made great contributions. It seems like today we try to demean those who were people of integrity, people that had character, and we try to advance those today that at best have been a burden to society. We think about those on the uh, the scale that have caused harm and they've, uh, they've pillaged and they've raped and they've uh, uh, murdered and they've done all sorts of things. Some of those people are the kinds of people we've been allowing to get into our borders. Isn't that a shame that we would just open our borders up and let people come in here not only illegally but try to masquerade it to where the citizens are not aware exactly of what's happening. And so we need clarification. We need truth first and foremost. And that unfortunately doesn't come from most of the media, but you and I can find the truth. We know who the truth is, and I'll say more about it shortly. is certainly one that I hope that you appreciate. Be sure and tell your church folks about it. And if you'd like to be a part of helping us, we don't want to beg. We want to be a blessing. But obviously, your help is needed. And uh, we're trying to be a voice to stand in these trying times. I think it was Mark Twain who said, in the beginning of a change, the patriot is a brave and scarce man often hated and scorned. But when his cause succeeds, however, the timid join him, for then it costs nothing to be a patriot. Today we have a great song. I like good singing. And these fellows 
Well, they sang for me a lot over the years. From Bryson City, North Carolina, let's enjoy the Inspirations Quartet. <laughs> Some wonderful morning just to hear Gabriel's trumpet sound. When I wake up, when I wake up to sleep no more. Rise to meet our blessed Redeemer with the glad shout, I'll leave the ground. When I wake up, when I wake up to sleep no more. Some glad morning to no more. She was adorning. If history teaches us anything, it is they who ignore the mistakes of the past are doomed to repeat them. Great nations and empires once renowned for their glory years are buried under the ignominious ash heap of civilizations decayed and destroyed, no longer remembered, but for the fact they no longer exist. The question then arises, why? What makes people and governments great, only to repeat the same basic cycle of rise and fall, like so many other great systems before them. Can nations not expect continuous blessings? Is success a temporary thing? Have we gone too far down the slippery slope of decadence and ultimate failure by the time we finally realize it? In short, Will America be like other great nations? Take our place in the sun and then wither and die. If there are things and habits that make for pleasant times, it must in fact be assumed that conditions that bring blessings also allows for those conditions that bring ruin. America prospered in her glory days. There were problems and failures and errors. But we believe God had blessed our land, and to Him we gave reverence. From the earliest times, the historical record is irrefutable, that all of our institutions presupposed a divine Creator, and that He was central to all of our habits and dispositions. There simply was no argument to this axiom. We took the Bible to be our rule and guide of faith. We built our homes, started schools, and raised our children upon its precepts for the better part of our history. To say we were not a Christian nation would have been unthinkable. Even the Supreme Court agreed. When we made mistakes, we corrected them. Our political parties were not divided as to the need for morality and the usefulness of the Ten Commandments being the common thread of good government. Because we believed that the least government is the best government, and that true self-government is when folks take responsibility for their own actions. Character was treasured. It was never divided into public 
and private spheres. Presidents took the oath of office by inserting, so help me God, our coins, our currency, our courts, our paid chaplains for the military and Congress, and our cathedrals made it clear for all to see that we had come to America, not to find gold, but to worship God. All over Washington, D.C., there is an abundance of visible evidence that a reverence for God and how He had been instrumental in all that America was, is, and ever shall be. Our national memorials, Statuary Hall in the Capitol, Moses and the Ten Commandments right at the entrance to the highest court in the land, the national anthem, the Pledge to Allegiance, and, in, and inscriptions abound for all to see with clarity that God and His laws were never to be forgotten nor ignored. Whether it be the mural of the baptism of Pocahontas in the rotunda of the Capitol building, or the reference, praise be to God, inscribed on the Liberty Bell in Philadelphia, the evidence is clear. This was and is a Christian nation. Now we find those who would rewrite history, deny our past, and in the interest of political correctness, simply not tell the truth, because telling the truth will upset some people. And this new trend of being more inclusive means we cannot say anything or promote anything that basically rubs people the wrong way. In fact, one easily could be guilty of an hate crime mentality that classifies people guilty if they say what is deemed unacceptable. The fact that it is true has no bearing upon the matter. A cultural war that allows for the destruction and makes the destruction of the snail daughter unlawful, but allows for the destruction over of over 51 million babies since the infamous Supreme Court decision of Roe v. Wade in 1973, when the court ruled that the posting of the Ten Commandments in the schools was not permissible because students might read them, obey them, and venerate them, we knew then we were in trouble. In short, leave our faith in the church house and make sure that even there it is watered down so as not to be judgmental. Disregard what the Bible says or what the evidence supports. Just make sure that truthfulness becomes secondary to being tolerance. Tolerance towards Christians is not to be observed, however. The moral relativist and human secularists argue that since we believe the Bible to be infallible and further believe that there is right and there is wrong, this belief in moral absolutes is not acceptable. A case in point is what happened when just a few years ago, Pastor Joe Wright was invited to give the invocation before the Kansas State Senate. What he included in his prayer caused many legislators to walk out and denounce the man of God and say publicly that his kind of prayer was not politically correct and therefore unacceptable. This even caught the attention of the late Paul Harvey. Pastor Joe Wright included these statements. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you today to implore your blessings and ask for your forgiveness. We know that your word says, woe to those that call evil good. And that is exactly what we've done. We have exploited the poor and called it the lottery. We have rewarded laziness and called it welfare. We have killed our unborn and called it choice. We have polluted the air with profanity and called it freedom of expression. We have ridiculed the time-honored values of our forefathers and called it enlightenment. Search our hearts today, O oh God, and cleanse us from every stain. He said something. Perhaps had he given 
an oratorical diatribe filled with innocuous verbiages, like we say sounding brass and tinkling cymbals, he probably would have been patted on the back and recognized for the effort. An empty, meaningless attempt at prayer was what they wanted. Be sure and not tell God that we had sinned, nor that we needed His call for repentance and restoration of godly values in our lives. Thus it behooves all who want to know the truth and believe that it is the truth that sets people free, our voice must be raised in unison to once again stand for the land we love and for the reasons it became great. The need is as great as we have ever faced in our history as a free republic to instruct, educate, and inspire all who will hear as to the enemies we face, the errors we encounter, and the enlightenment we so desperately need. As you know, we always like to have guests on the Faith, Family, and Freedom program, particularly those that we know are Christian patriots that love America, that have a, that believe in the exceptionalism of America. And just recently, I have gotten to meet Mr. Mark Hall, an entrepreneur, business person, a philanthropist, a person that has a grandchildren, children, and just an overall a uh, community person. Mark's good to have you. Thank you, Andrew. It's good to be here. And uh, I asked Micah Clark in, in one of the programs that we're doing with him about, uh, I know we could speak on the fact that you feed people here and you have centers where folks can come and get food around the, uh, but, I, and I'm not uh, minimizing that, but mm -hmm. I want to get your take on what can we do, the people that might be watching this program in Georgia or whatever, or Ohio or Michigan, what are we in need of today, brother? Well, I think that it's each believer's responsibility to, to be the body of Christ in the marketplace. Yes, you need to go and be a part of a body and you need to worship, but so many people spend more time in the marketplace than they ever do in a church. Right. So we can engage people where they work. We can engage people where they live. We can engage them culturally. And so many believers have taken a, a step back. We've gotten shy or we're afraid of the influence of the left or we're afraid of being called a name or someone might whisper about us behind our back. We as believers are called to be salt and light. That's one of the things we do with feedingteam.org. You know, people really don't care to know about the Lord um, if their babies I can't get fed. They don't really care to know about the Lord if they don't know where their next meal is coming from. Uh, in our business, we have the opportunity to pour into thousands of people every year and be the body of Christ. We can be the church. Uh, I, I learned recently that the average church size in America is still just under 100 people. Mm -hmm. Well, most businesses exceed that size. Right. So as a leader in business, I believe that I'm called to shepherd and steward that business no different than a pastor is, and the opportunity to pour into people's lives. So we can have a two-pronged approach. I believe that the church and a revival within the church should parallel the marketplace, and a revival in the marketplace. I believe that's where the next explosion is going to happen. Uh, what do you think would happen if we had a revival in the church Brother. I think it spills out. I think it goes universally. I remember some of the, I'm old enough to remember some <laughs> of the old Billy Graham crusades and seeing uh -huh. it and experiencing it. In fact, you know, when I was saved back in 1969, I, it was at a revival. So I've, I've lived those experiences. I believe that true revival will turn the culture on its head. I believe true revival will mean a, an impact for the eternal kingdom like we've never seen before. Do we need, uh, you know, uh, popularity shouldn't bother us, should it? Huh? <laughs> no, no. We, we're, we weren't called to be popular. No. Culture, culture is trying to teach people to worry about how you feel. Well, uh, Micah had said something earlier. It's, we're called to be polite and be respectful, but we're also called to hold fast to the tenets of our faith. Right, yeah. 
Yeah. Not compromise. Having done all to stand, then stand, right? Correct. Right, right. right. Correct. Well, I think that as uh, we go along here, Mark, I want you to feel welcome on this program because your input, you're in the community, you're active, you're engaged in the marketplace, not only of ideas, but in the marketplace of goods and services, feeding the poor. Uh, I'd like for you to come back as frequently as I'd, you can. I'd be happy to do that, Andrew. Thank you very much. I'm happy to do it anytime we can work it out. Well, it's an honor. Thank you for being with us today. I appreciate it. Good to meet you, Andrew. Uh -huh. Thank you much. God bless. Hello, friends. This is Andrew Fitz, and I believe that we need all of the materials that we can gather to help us as we combat the attack upon our faith, our family, and our freedoms. We need to be educated. And I have a handbook that has been given to state legislatures. It's been given to members of Congress. It's a colorfully created handbook that has graphs, charts, quotes, and different things in it. You'll be impressed with it. And also we have DVDs. We have CDs that are God and country, return to greatness, and faith, family, and freedom, some other wonderful materials. See the contact information on the screen. Be sure that you order some because these will be of a tremendous help. They are supplemental materials to help you in your Christian walk. And may God bless. And friends, you and I today have such a wonderful opportunity. We live in a great land. Even with all of our problems, we still have a good opportunity to make a difference. We as Christians can let our light shine before others so that they may see our good works and turn and glorify the Father which art in heaven. I hope today that you are a Christian. I hope today that you have a love for Christ. That's the most supreme priority, to know him and a pardon of sin, to know that sins are forgiven, to know that you've changed, that you took your place as a sinner and have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's wonderful. And I hope that in our challenge today, that as we've talked about civilizations, you know, so many of us have grandchildren. Shirley and I are privileged to have great grandchildren. We love them dearly. And I know that you do, and that's just natural that we love our family. And uh, I just want to do what we can do. I think we have the best chance to reach more people. And I feel like that God's gonna allow that to reach more people than we could have ever thought about reaching. You know, if we could just reach 1%, if we could reach 1%, one person out of every 100 that we have the potential to reach in these various television markets, we're talking about thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of people that would be able to hear us. So we're grateful to the Lord for the opportunity. We want to just raise a clarion call and stand for the faith of our fathers. We believe that God really shed his grace upon America, that we grew out of these 13 fledgling colonies, came to this new world and set things in order, and uh, God has blessed us. Did we make mistakes? Surely. And we've tried, I think, to the best of our ability in many cases, perhaps not all, to change and make some good changes. But by the same token, there have been changes that have made that have pushed us farther to the gutter, that have pushed us farther down the slippery slope to moral decadence. And I really believe that if the, that righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people, except the Lord keep the city. They that keep it waketh in vain. And I believe today that we're not to remove the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. We have so many biblical imperatives, mandates, or commandments that tell us to live righteously, godly, in this present world, looking for that glorious appearing 
of our great God and Savior who gave himself for us. It's a wonderful contribution, a wonderful consolation to me to think about the hope that we have today. I hope that this information perhaps that we have shared with you, particularly from the Return to Greatness DVD. We have products, you can go to our website, Andrew Phipps, our Faith, Family, and Freedom. Check it out and we'll be glad to hear from you. Again, pray for us and we hope that we can continue to be a part of your day. We're gonna look forward to being with you again at the next time. But until then, this is your friend, Andrew Phipps saying, have a wonderful day. Phipps Faith, Family and Freedom presented by Clemens Home Solutions and Heritage Funeral Care.